Hi there, this is Mike from Underwater Macro How To, and today I'm going to talk through exposure controls on the Olympus TG6. Now, the reason that this is interesting to me is because the TG6, being a compact camera, doesn't have a good set of controls. So, you can't control all three of the different exposure settings. And so, there are a couple little workarounds, and let's look at what you actually can do and what you can change. And by exposure, what we mean are three different controls that you have inside of a camera to change how bright or how dark that photo is. But each one of those controls has a side effect. Now, out of this, you can see this, this picture here. Um, I actually got this off a site called the Phoblographer. And, but you can find tons of different charts like this out on the internet. Just use a Google image search. Um, but what it, this shows you is that you have these three different controls. And the top one is called the aperture. And the bigger that hole is, or the lower the aperture number, so in fact f1.4, the bigger that is, the more light it lets into the photo, but the more, um, more blurry the background will be. Okay. where if you have that really, really small, you let in less light, you have a darker picture, but you get much more depth of focus. Okay. The second one is your shutter speed, where a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second freezes motion, okay, which is really good when you're diving because you're moving, the current's pushing you around, but it um, lets less light in. In the meantime, on the other hand, one quarter of a second allows lots of light in. You have a brighter picture, but if you move the camera, you add a lot of blur to that camera or if the subject's moving. Okay? And then the bottom one is ISO, um, which used to make sense in the old film cameras, but today not, not much. Um, think of it as the sensitivity or the gain on the sensor. So... A lower ISO is a darker picture because that that sensor isn't as sensitive, but um, it doesn't have as much pixelization, right? There's not as much noise. Where if you turn it up to, say, ISO 1600 um, or even higher, mo most cameras today go higher than that, um, you'll have a light, a lot more light that registers on the sensor, but you'll also have a lot more noise, okay? And so you've got these three different... Um, different controls impacting how bright or how dark your photo is, and they're all related. So if you move the ISO maybe down two stops, um, that or down down two settings, that makes the overall picture darker. But maybe you can open up the aperture a little bit to let more light in to compensate. Okay, um, and they're actually they've got a lot of weird numbers. All of these numbers are usually related to each other. So you move one setting on one, you move one setting on the other. Or maybe you move one setting uh, two places, and then you move the other two settings one place each, and it kind of averages out. Now on a normal camera, like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, you have different controls. You have physical buttons. This is the layout of the buttons on the TG6. And you can see there isn't really any um, dials or buttons specifically to go in and manipulate exposure. Some of the exposure controls are in the menu. Some are in the, the quick menu. Some are in the deep menu. Let's go through those, and I'll show you how to actually set those up. To get into the full configuration mode, you go and hit the menu button just below the, the directional pad um, on the left. And you can go in, if you go into the gear, and then go, right, so you can go up, down, gear through these, uh, or flip through these. Go to the gear, go down to option C, and it'll have auto ISO set. Hit OK for that. And you have two different settings here. One is the upper limit, okay? And that is the upper limit when you use automatic ISO. This will set how high do you allow that ISO to be set. Okay, and you'll see this thing goes up. It goes up quite a bit. Um, I don't even know how far it goes up. Okay, 10,000, 1280, or 12,800. Okay. Um, normally, with because the sensor on the TG6 is so small, I'll keep this at something like 800 
I think that the photo quality starts to get a lot of noise once you go up above 800. So I'll keep that at 800. Uh, maybe if it's a really rare situation, I'll go ahead and, and flip that to uh, maybe a thousand. Um, but this sets the uh, this sets the, the the maximum amount of ISO that you will allow the camera to set when it's in auto ISO mode. Okay? And I'll show you how to set that. That's on the quick menu. The other thing you have here is the lowest shutter speed setting. Whoops. And you have to right click to go in there. And what that will do is either you could set it automatic and say, here, use whatever um, whatever shutter speed the camera feels comfortable with, depending on how it how it meters the light in, in that particular shot. Or you can set it as a minimum shutter speed. Uh, minimum shutter speed. And you can set it, you know, you can set it down to 1 8th. You can set it all the way up to something crazy. Um, normally for diving, you're good with something around 60 is really slow for underwater macro just because you move around a lot. Maybe 60 is okay with the flash because you won't expose the full 1 60th of the second. You'll expose, expose the 1, uh, like 1 125th or 1 250th of the second that it takes for that flash to fire. Um, so that's okay with a flash. With something like a handheld torch, I'll usually use 1 over 100 or 1 over 125. Okay, so let's set it 1 over 100. So that's pretty good for using a handheld torch. You could just put it to auto, but sometimes you'll get, um, it'll use a really, really uh, slow shutter speed, and you'll get a lot of blur. Okay, so those are the two that I that I set up inside of the um, inside of the main menu. Now to get into the settings in the quick menu, in order to get into the quick menu, you you push the OK button, right, the center of the pad, and that will bring up your ISO. Okay, so it'll bring up these different options, and if it's not on ISO immediately, just flip through until you get to ISO. And you can see, you can go in and manually set the auto, um, or you could set it to auto. Uh, try to minimize the amount of variables that you have. So use, say, auto ISO with auto shutter speed um, is going to give you, it's just a lot more variety, but a lot more variability, but it's allowing the computer in the camera to pick what setting it wants to use, okay? Um, Normally for stuff, um, if I'm going to use it manual, obviously lower is better, but you'll end up with a lot of dark pictures. Uh, if you're just using a handheld torch, something like 250 or 320 is probably going to be the setting that you want it on. Or if you just go in and you set up the, the auto ISO for 800, which we did, go ahead and you can just use the auto ISO. If you flip the uh, the mode dial to aperture, which is the A on the mode dial, you set it there, it allows you, as you can see here in the screen, the uh, lower part of the screen where it says F9.0, that's the aperture that I'm set at. And you can change that dial there to change your aperture. You only have three settings, right? You've got F9, F3, and F2.3. Um, normally for macro, like a 3.2 is pretty good to start out with. Um, use a 2.3 if you have a lot of light and use F9 if you're having problems getting enough depth of focus to get all of that subject in the in the photo. Now that we understand the three controls, let's take a little bit of time to look at the information screens. So if you hit the info button, it will cycle through different displays while you're in shooting mode. So you see here, um, that's no data at all, no no marginal data. That gives a histogram and some of the exposure settings. That gives us the tilt meters. Okay, so you can tilt the camera. Um, this, let me try like this. Um, so if you tilt, tilt the camera this way, tilt the camera this way. I don't really use that when I'm shooting macro. Um, also, there's an up and down tilt. There is um, this screen, which is my, the one that I use a lot because it has all of the exposure information shown um, and it helps you to understand what it is that your camera is actually doing. 
So let me work through what this is actually telling me. So down in the lower left corner here, you see this big A. That's showing me that the camera is in aperture control mode. And you set that using the mode dial. So I can change to something like um, flip to microscope mode. Hit OK. That's what I want to use. And so now it shows me with a big microscope there. I'll flip it back to aperture. To the right of that, this 50, that is the shutter speed. So in this case, this this if I shoot a photo right now, the exposure, um, the, the shutter speed for the exposure will be at 1 50th of a second. To the right of that, this bright yellow f2.3, that is the aperture setting that I'm using, and I can control that because I'm in aperture mode. I can control that manually, okay? And you'll see as I switch it to f2.3, I'm at 1 50th of a second. If I flip it to 3.2, then it takes, it takes the shutter speed down to 1 30th of a second to compensate because I made the aperture shoot a darker photo. And if I change it to f9.0, it takes the shutter speed down to 1 quarter of a second, okay? which isn't really usable um, if you're hand holding that, that shot. Okay? you also see when I change this, I get this meter that shows here. It goes away in a second, but that meter shows me if my exposure compensation is set, it'll show me um, how much brighter or darker that I'm going to actually be making that, that photo. Um, up here in the upper right-hand corner, I'm in color mode three, which is usually, I usually shoot in vivid or natural. Um, ISO is 320, right? And I showed you how to change that. Um, you can see other stuff. So how big my photo is, what my, what my, um, um, how I'm actually metering the, the photograph, a whole bunch of other things. But those are the ones that you look at, right? So if you go out and you're shooting and you can actually monitor what settings the camera is going to shoot on before you even take the shot, okay? If I were to take a shot, I can go in and hit the play button. So that will play it back. You also have info screens here. So I can flip through. This one um, gives me my date, time, my location, um, which way is north. This one is the one that's interesting to me. So this gives me a histogram down here. Okay, so for my red, blue, green, and then white, what are the, um, you know, what's the histogram for it? You see this blinking orange here, that shows me that I'm overexposed. Those are the places that are overexposed. Uh, places that are dark, I believe, come up as purple. This, on the right-hand side, it gives me all of my exposure information. So I was in aperture mode. Um, I was shooting at one-eighth of a second. My f-stop was 3.4. My focus distance was 5.4 millimeters. Um, my ISO is 320. My color mode was natural. Um, and then here's the size of the picture, which color system I used, a whole bunch of other stuff. But you can actually go in and get all of your exposure information off that photo. So when you get a photo maybe that's too dark, um, you can go say, okay, why is this dark? Flip to, flip to the uh, view your photos, hit the info screen until you get this display, and then take a look and see what were the settings that the camera actually picked when it shot that. If you're having problems with photos being overexposed or, or underexposed, go in and say, hey, maybe is there a way that I can maybe change one of the menu settings, either the deep full menu or in the quick menu, and change that setting to actually give me a photo that exposes nicely. There is one last control that you need to know, and that's exposure compensation, or what we, we just call it EC a lot of times. Now, in order to get to the exposure compensation, you push the up arrow on the directional pad. That gives you this thing here in the bottom of the screen. That's a meter. And you can go in and push the left and right arrows on the directional pad. Really what that's saying is that the computer in the camera will 
look at the center of the photo and determine what exposure settings it should use. As you move that left and right, it will say, if you move it to the right, it'll say, make the picture brighter. And you'll see, say here, it's using something like one-tenth of a second at f3.2 to take that photo. If I move it brighter, it might change to something like, you know, one-sixth of a second. Where if I want to make a darker photo, I'll move the exposure compensation down, and you'll see there it'll shoot at one one-hundredth of a second in order to make that photo darker. You can actually use the exposure compensation as a little bit of a weird meter to go ahead and play with some of your settings. So you say, okay, maybe I'll change that to, you know, F3.2, it'll move it down to 1 of a second. But what if I go in and hit OK to set that? Um, what if I want to change it to F9.0, now it's at 1 5th of a second? Then go back into exposure compensation and you can go ahead and do kind of do hypothetical settings to figure out what is the camera going to actually do to make a photo of a certain brightness, right? And so it's, it's just one of those things you can play around with really easily. Whoops. Um, it's one of those things you can just play around with relatively easy just to get a feel for how the camera is going to respond. Because this is all a little bit confusing, I went ahead and made you a cheat sheet. Okay? Um, and here it is, obviously. So ISO, if you're just setting up your camera, go ahead and set your maximum auto setting to 800, to ISO 800. If you're using a torch and you don't want to use automatic ISO setting, set it to 320 is a good starting, uh, starting position. Same if you're using a strobe, maybe 100, maybe you'll need to bump it up to 200 or 320, but start at 100 and see how your photos turn out. Shutter speed, like I said, you can't really control it. You can just set what the minimum setting is. If you're using a handheld torch, you will have, or even a, uh, a housing mounted torch, you probably want to set to one over 125th. If that's still a little bit dark, bump it to one over 100th or one over 80. Um, 1 over 80 is probably the lowest I would go. If you, you're using a strobe, 1 over 60 is pretty good. Maybe if you get some blur in the photo, set that up to something, you know, maybe move it to 1 over 80, maybe 1 over 100. Um, but usually 1 over 60 is pretty decent. And then in aperture, it really only matters unless if you're in aperture mode. If you're doing macro, start it at f3.2 if you're um, running with a torch. And if you're running with a strobe, maybe try f9.0. The caveat there being that, or warning, being that if you have your ISO set way low and your aperture set at f9 and your shutter speed set really high at, say, f250, even a strobe won't be able to help you. So you might have to cheat a little bit here and there. And that is basically everything you really can do with exposure on the TG6. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or even if you like the video. And I'll see you next time.